The forest cover witnessed in this particular estate is not something quite common in this day and age. Located right next to the Karura Forest, this week's episode of Area Code takes you right at the heart of one estate whose construction and design plans were drawn as early as 1903 by the white settlers who settled in this part of Africa. This week on Area Code, we shall be delving into Mudaiga Estate and try to explain to you why this particular estate is perhaps known for its serenity, tranquility and exclusive lifestyle. Can just anybody be a resident of this particular estate? Let's find out on Area Code tonight. Welcome to Mudaiga Estate. This is a place where homes and the environment come as advertised. Here, high picket fences adorn every street and you'll rarely see anyone walk by. In fact, Mudaiga is one of those estates where, chances are, residents don't know whom their next door neighbor is. But thanks to the Mudaiga Residents Association, that analogy is slowly but surely changing. Now, residents here have to meet once a year for their annual Mudaiga Residence Luncheon, meant to help residents network. The brains behind the idea is this man, renowned judge, former director of public prosecution, and former chair of the Judges and Magistrates Board, Mr. Sharad Rao. So the function of the Mataiga Residence basically has been to keep Mataiga as was or rather even as is. Keeping Mudaiga as was or as is, as Sharad Rao puts it, is by no means a walk in the park. The residents have over the years fought off construction of commercial buildings and to this day, Mudaiga remains perhaps just one among a very few number of estates that remains exclusively as a residential area. This is the only area in uh, Nairobi where you do not find a single kiosk, for instance, because they are not permitted here. And we have had the cooperation of the police, cooperation of the county council, in seeing that we do not allow any kiosks here in this area. So by and large, even the development properties, etc., are controlled very strictly, of course, by the county, but with, in liaison with us. We are in constant uh, uh, discussions with them as to the kind of development and the size of the development. Development in Mudaiga is highly controlled. Land here is sold mainly as half-acre plots meant for single dwelling for domestic purposes only. Here and there, you get to spot a few houses under construction. But to be honest, you have to have really deep pockets to call yourself a resident here. As per the first quarter of 2018, land here had been valued at 144.7 million shillings per acre. On average, if you intend to buy a three-bedroom marginet in the area, then you'll have to part with at least 71.6 million shillings. The rental price index here goes for about 308,000 shillings per month for rent. But to truly understand why Mudaiga is so expensive, you must first appreciate where the estate has come from. Unlike many of the estates we have today, Mudaiga was actually planned for. This is a copy of the actual map that was drawn as a design for the estate back in the 1900s by the colonial white settlers. The planning was meant for about 150 households. Now, Mudaiga hosts nearly three times that number. Even today, when you look at the title deeds of the properties, it still says that it is restricted to uh, owning, owner, owning by Europeans only. Really? But obviously, it is not being affected today. My own pro property, my own title deed, also says that uh, strictly legally, according to that, I cannot own it. But I do. Mudaiga Estate is believed to have been established in 1903, largely through the efforts of two individuals, James Morrison and Freddie Ward. 
James Morrison is said to have bought over 1,600 acres of land from the then Commissioner of the East Africa Protectorate, Sir Charles Elliott. Morrison would then hire his friend, ex-British Army commander and landscaper Freddie Ward, to draw up plans for an estate where retired army officers from England could come to live once they were sent to govern the East African Protectorate of Kenya. Freddie Ward drew up this map that is more than 115 years old for a well-planned estate complete with a golf course and country club. It would however take more than a decade before the country club was opened on the 28th of September 1912. A decade later in 1923 the Mudaiga Golf Club was established. The history of the golf club is clearly depicted and lined up on these walls where major regional golf tournament winners have been displayed. The Kenya Open Golf Tournament, which marked its 50-year anniversary, is still held at the Mudaiga Golf Club. I started well, I, I played pretty bad yesterday and the Holy One helped me a lot to make the cut today. In the past, both the country club and golf club were an exclusive place meant for whites only. Subsequently, the area around Mudaiga became home to white settlers and that remained so until after independence in 1963. But Mudaiga still remained for quite many years, still a very European stronghold. Uh, I bought my house in 1970, and uh, I think there were only three or four uh, non-European houses here at the time that I came in. And, was there uh, any African? Uh, there were no Africans at all uh, at that time. I think the first African perhaps to come in, I think, was Charles Jonjo uh, in this area. But uh, we had uh, Murumbi, who was the uh, Vice President, uh, he lived here, I know. Uh, Gechaga had come in, Gechaga who used to be uh, in the, on the BAT. So I think those were the, basically the only three that I knew uh, at the that? time that 1970 when I came in, that they were here. Sharad Rao has been a resident in Mudaiga estate for nearly half a century. He heads the Mudaiga Residents Association as the group of residents chairman, a title he has held since 1999 when the association came into being. He tells me as late as the 1970s, living in Mudaiga was not easy for an Asian, let alone an African. When I came here in 1970, uh, we had a dog. The dog was barking on the very first day, as dogs normally do. And my neighbor uh, came in and from across the fence he shouted at my mother who used to live with us to say that uh, stop your dog from barking. This is Mathaiga. This is not Parklands where you should be living. Uh, so I confront, I met him at that evening at a cocktail party. So I went up to him and I introduced myself to him. And he said, oh you are Rao, the assistant DPP. So I said, no, no, I didn't come to introduce myself. I came purely to tell you that I am your new next door neighbor. And whereas I'm Indian, I said, my dog is not. My dog is European. He's a German shepherd. And he never spoke to me after that. So that was the kind of atmosphere that we had uh, even as late as seven years after independence. The Mudaiga of today is interestingly not so different from that of old. Though nowadays you'll find a blended mixture of not only different shades of races but also nationalities calling this place home. Mudaiga Estate is home to at least two dozen diplomats and ambassadors residences including the residence of the British High Commissioner, the ambassadors of Brazil, Denmark, Belgium, Austria, Netherlands, Australia, India, Saudi Arabia, Romania, you name it. After the break, I'll be telling you why Mudaiga Estate may perhaps have such a special place in the hearts and minds 
of little children.